You can understand why people confuse Matthew Perry with his character Chandler Bing. There's a heavy dose of Matthew in Chandler. The wise guy attitude, the nervous energy, the unsinkable sense of humor. But now that he's saying goodbye to friends, Matthew admits there are times he just wants to chuck his inner good humor man and just get, well, real. I've always wanted to go on The Tonight Show and, and have, and Jay says, so how you doing? I go, not, not, not good. Um, and just like, really just like tell the truth or like even or extended, do something, yeah. I, to tell you the truth, Jay, I have no idea which end is up and down in my life anymore. After 10 years of interviews about friends, who could blame Matthew Perry for wanting to shake things up? Mine is the red one. I would think one of the best things about ending this chapter and saying goodbye to friends is you don't have to be interviewed by people like me anymore. No, no. In fact, this is the first time you and I have done a one-on-one -on -one interview. That's I'm true. All, I'm all on Twitter. That's, oh, I'm sure you are. Thanks. Do I detect a little sarcasm? Okay, I don't sound like that. That is so not true. <laughs> On Friends, Chandler speak was a dialect all its own. Could there be more Kims? <laughs> Often imitated. Look at me! I'm Chandler! Could I be wearing any more clothes? But never duplicated. Ooh, I'm alive with pleasure now. <laughs> How much, Matthew, are you like Chandler Bing? Uh... It's, you know, that, yes. You've never been asked that before, have no, you? No, no. And I have the standard joke for it, which oh, is ahead, I look a lot like him. Oh, that's That's funny. what I say to that. If it seems Matthew Perry's always going for a laugh, it's because he's used to getting them and has been ever since he was six. You know, when you get, you get your first laugh, like you know, I'm six years old and I'm, you know, I pretend to fall down and people laugh and just something tingles in your brain and you're like, ooh, I want more of this. And if there's any way to get paid doing it wow yeah utopia you know but his childhood was far from perfect matthew an only child was born in massachusetts then raised in canada by his single mother suzanne your parents got divorced when you were quite young when you were just one i was right? one yeah so i didn't blame myself quite yet <laughs> but uh Still, Matthew idolized his father, John Bennett Perry, a working actor who would call his son long distance when he was a part of some must-see TV. That was mostly the way that I saw my father when I was young, was like on TV shows and, you know, getting shot through a door on Mannix or something. I was like, that's my dad. Come on. That's his dad, too, the studly sailor in those Old Spice commercials. He's very attractive, by the way. Yeah, Notice the father-son thing. And you saw the people sexiest. anything. That was one of the best moments I've ever had. Really? Why? Yeah, just because I get to show up to a photo shoot with my father, and he and I really enjoy sharing time. And it's just so corny and sexy. It's father and son. Well, I have to tell you, your dad is hot. Okay. <laughs> I've been hearing that my whole life. <laughs> when he was 16, Matthew moved to Hollywood, hoping a little more than the smell of his father's cologne would rub off on him. I did a pilot called LAX24, which was about baggage handlers in, Futuristic. The, in the year 2194 at LAX. God, I love my life. Picture. Now that sounds riveting. Yeah, and I was wearing a futuristic yeah, shirt let some government agents and screw up my life. I can sorting out aliens' luggage. That's what the show was. I'm so shocked it wasn't a hit. Yeah, well, thank God, because if it had gotten picked up, I wouldn't have been able to do this. Art was about to imitate life. In creating his alter ego Chandler, Kevin Bright, Marta Kaufman, and David Crane asked Matthew Perry to just be himself. Too many jokes. <laughs> Must mock Joey. And what they did was they took all of us out to lunch um, separately and said, Tell us about your lives. I mean, we know you're, you know, you can act and you've got this part, and just tell us a little bit about your, yourself. And I remember saying, two things. I said, well, I'm not an unattractive man, but I do very terrible, I'm just awful with women and have really bad relation, relationship problems and I'm scared to ask people out on dates and, you know, that's kind of a character you haven't seen before. I've scared you. I've said too much. I'm hopeless and awkward and desperate for love. <laughs> and I also am not comfortable in any silence at all at the time. This is ten years ago. But let me keep talking so there's no sound. <laughs> um, 
Did you tell them you were a bit of a wiseacre? Or? Yeah, I told well, I told them that, but I said I'm not. I have to break uh, any awkward moment or any any silences with a joke. And what better character for a sitcom is that? It's a built-in excuse for him to be funny. Hey, Chandler, when you see Frankie, tell him Joey Tribbiani says hello. He'll know what it means. <laughs> you sure he's going to be able to crack that code? I wanted this, and, you know, of course it wasn't what I expected it to be. What you expected it to be? I expected it to just be that everything was going to be okay now. Because I spent like five years complaining, like if I just got a job where I could express myself creatively, and like all those dramatic talks that you're <laughs> saying to women to try to, try to score. take them home, uh, and you don't really mean. <laughs> no. And then I got it, and then for about eight months I was just thrilled. Like I was, I would go to like the Beverly Center and like walk around and like yep. see if anybody. Would. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Like I would, That's I was so really. Sad. It was so sad. It's awful. He might have felt comfortable in the white hot spotlight of Friends, but by the show's fifth season, Matthew Perry was feeling more and more uncomfortable in his own skin. It was great for eight months. And then he kind of realized, no, reality, same issues are coming up. And uh, somebody smart once told me um, that it was like my fantasies had come true, not my dreams had come true. And I think that's what it was. But 1997 seemed more like a nightmare. That was the year Matthew Perry checked himself into rehab for addiction to prescription pills. And he continued to battle addiction until 2001. Now, at 34, Perry says he's clean. You have to get scared enough. That's the thing. You have to get scared enough to realize the uh, expression that's commonly used is like you have a drink in front of you and you, and you don't know what's going to happen if you finish it and you don't know what's going to happen if you don't. You know, it's like in that moment where you get so scared that you just ask for help, you know. And it's tough to do without fully bottoming out, which I was lucky. I kind of health-wise almost and spiritually bottomed out, but, you know, I didn't lose everything. You feel great now. Yeah. You know, I'm a little trepidatious about the future and, you know, what's, what's in store business-wise, I suppose. Yeah. Are you scared? But, I'm a little, see, I chose trepidatious. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> I, I'm trying to I sound smart. He was, he's I, your I, monosyllabic yeah. words. I even put glasses on. <laughs> After Friends, you can still expect to see Matthew making occasional cameos on the West Wing. This spring, he co-stars in The Whole Ten Yards, and next year, he'll star in a movie with his dad. Yes, they're playing father and son. But if Matthew Perry is still trepidatious, here's why. I've had three auditions in the last ten years and gotten none of none, none of them. So well, I think I'm your resume three. is uh, your resume is a little more impressive no, now but, than no, it was but then. This was during this was during Friends, so, and they're like, no, no, thanks. <laughs> I was just like, but people bring me soup. Will I work? Like, what do you mean? You say no to me? Nobody says no to me here. People bring me soup. Coming up. With friends coming to an end, what will Jennifer Aniston do with her free time? I want to see, see as much of the world as I can before I have a child. So much for free time. All right, well, I'll see if, uh, if they can cancel it. Or, or maybe they can just put eyes on the hoochies and we'll say that it's... <laughs> All right, well, I'll see if... <laughs> All right, well, I'll just see if they can cancel it. Or maybe they can just... <laughs>